Hey, Team Inspire leaders. So I, I uh, mentioned on the call last week that I wanted to put together a video and just talk about uh, the men's conference that I went to in Dallas last weekend. And um, there was tons and tons of amazing information that was given out, lots of great stuff. And it wasn't just like a big, you know, pump you up type of session, but they had tons and tons of information lots of great skills and, and just different things that, that they shared. Um, some of it was kind of geared towards leaders, some of it was geared towards teams. And so I think I'm gonna to try to do a call on, on the whole Team Inspire and share some of the stuff that I learned, but also wanted to just put this video out there for you guys as leaders um, and point out specifically some things that they talked about that, um, that I think you guys would benefit from. Um, this is kind of just my notes from the meeting, so it's gonna be a little bit scrambled, so try to stick with me as, as we go through this, but um, really pay attention because the things that that uh, I learned, um, you know, I've gone over my notes a couple times just in this past week since I've been back, and it's led to a big mind shift. Uh, what's that word? A big shift in our mindset um, in Tiffany and I in our business, so um, pay attention. But one of the, one of the things that that uh, they talked about was uh, rooftop leadership. And it was something that Scott Mann um, talked about. And, and if you're coming to Summit and you come to Summer's uh, pre-Summit meeting, um, he's gonna be there and, and speak to you. And so you'll, you'll learn some of this stuff here. But what he talked about was, was rooftop leadership. And, and he, he got that from the time that he was in uh, the military. He's a Green Beret. And he spent a lot of time over in Afghanistan. And he told the story about how, you know, they go into these rural villages and, um, you know, there's just a group of him and his Green Beret uh, friends. And, and, you know, they would go and just live in, in these small little villages. And they would have to gain their trust. And, and what he would say is the, the what they would have to do is they'd have to go in and basically... Uh, be really good storytellers. You know, they they go in, they tell stories, they would build relationships with these people in the village, and uh, get them to try to defend themselves and fight back against the Taliban instead of, you know, just these American soldiers fighting for them. Um, they were trying to get them to to stand up for themselves and, and fight back. And so, one of the things he he gave three different points. One of them was know your arena. And what he said was, is, is you've got to build trust. You've got to bridge relationships with all different types of people that are inside of your, your world or your arena. So whether that's, um, you know, you're, you're a mom and have kids in school and, and you're active in your PTA, um, your neighborhood, your, your church organization, your, um, you know, if you have a job and, and you work. Um, in that job community or, or any different type of group that you're a part of, but know, know the people in there, build relationships. Um, second thing is without those relationships and without building trust, that lack of trust leads to skepticism, uh, said at least to scarcity and a primitive way of living. And he said, you know, back in the olden days, um, you know, before America was started, um, and even now in these tribal societies in Afghanistan, they, they have this primitive way of living where they, they trust who's in their small little community, in their little tribe. Um, anybody outside of that tribe, though, is not trusted. They will not do business with them. Um, you know, you're an outsider. This is my in-group right here. Everybody else is an out-group. Um, and, and that's the way that society used to be everywhere in the world. Um, but as, as America kind of came to power, um, we started to build uh, these, these uh, forms of, of community. Like he gave the examples of, um, you know, like Shriners and the Lions Club or the Lions or, you know, something like that. And, um, you know, like AA and, and stuff like that where, where it bridged across all these different geographical regions and, and built a whole system of community. Where in America, we, we can basically trust, you know, we can give our, our, our uh, you know, investments and, and money over to an individual who we barely know and trust that they're going to take care of it for us. And 
he said, slowly, you know, America, we're kind of eroding that trust where we don't really trust our neighbors anymore. And we're dividing ourselves into these, into these different tribes, you know, based off of, uh, you know, race and ethnicity and, you know, all these different things. We're, we're degrading our community and becoming this tribal society again, basically. So, um, you know, he, that's where he talked about it's so important that we that we go back to where America was. But but what's going to uh, take us back there is leaders and leaders that are willing to step up and bridge those um, gaps that are in, in trust. Um, and then the third point that he said is lead from the rooftop. And this is where you restore trust. And where that rooftop comes in is he told a story about how when they're in these um communities when they embed themselves in these little communities um he said every single time they would do that within a couple days the taliban would come in and start um fighting him and so he said every single time it was in the middle of the night and so what would happen is the taliban would come in and they'd get the message that the taliban was there you know they were firing at him or whatever and so um all of him and his green beret buddies they put on their armor they'd climb up the ladders up to the rooftop and they'd start firing back at them and they'd, you know, be there all night long. And it was only them. It was only the Green Berets that were fighting back. Um, and then the sun would come up, the Taliban would leave, and then the next night they'd do the same thing over again. They'd climb up the ladders, they'd be up there all alone, shooting and fighting back uh, and trying to protect this village. And he said, every single time we did that, invariably it was by the, you know, second, third night, something like that, that they'd climb up the ladders, they'd get up there, they'd start shooting, and they'd look over, and um, on another rooftop, there'd be one of the villagers that was that was firing back at the Taliban too. And then the next night, there were, you know, a few other villagers on top of their rooftops, and they were firing back. And he said, you know, eventually they get to the point where they'd get, they'd, uh, you know, hear the call that, hey, Taliban's here, they're fighting, they'd wake them up in the middle of the night, they'd climb up their ladders, and before they could even get up there, the villagers were already up there and were already firing back and fighting and fighting against the Taliban. And so he calls that rooftop leadership because they, the Green Beret were setting the example. They were up there, they were fighting, they were, they were acting and, and uh, you know, fighting back without the expectation um, that the villagers were going to be there with them, but they did it anyways. And he said those type of authentic actions where you're willing to act and to serve and to do even without expecting anything in return, that's where you build that trust and, and, and where people are, are going to follow you. He said people will follow you into hell and back if you show them that you're there for them, that you're going to fight for them, and you're not expecting anything in return. So I know his his whole uh, philosophy on leadership has this you know bigger world view than a lot of people do, but I, I think it's it's so important that we that we learn that. Um, one of the other things that uh, one of the other coaches talked about um, was he said you've got to create a team and an environment around you where you've got you know several people that you feel comfortable with that that they can tell you the truth that if if they feel like you're going in the wrong direction, that you're doing something wrong, um, telling you that, you know, you're good at something or you're not good at something else, um, creating that environment where you've got, you know, a team or a core group of people that you can, that you can look at and they're going to, um, you know, shoot straight with you and, and tell you, uh, and be honest with you. Um, one of the other things that they talked about was getting your story down. So you, they said, you've got to, you've got to know your story. You've got to repeat it. Um, you've got to have it down two minutes or less. You know, what is your story? What is your story with Beachbody? What is your story with, um, you know, leadership, nutrition, you know, whatever it is that, that your story consists of. Um, write that down and have it down repeated and, and trained so that anytime that comes up that, that you've got your story down. And that way, as you're, as you're posting and as you're telling uh, your stories online and um, you know, different events or whatever you're at, you're always drawing back to this central um, story and you're consistent with it. Um, they talked about how 
uh, as you're helping to train coaches, um, most of the time we set that goal for diamond. Like, all right, you start up, you signed up as a coach, you know, these are your goals. You want to get to, um, you know, Emerald in this amount of time and you want to get to diamond and, you know, that's your goal. But he said with that mindset is people get set in their mind that, okay, I've got to get to diamond. And then once they get to diamond, then that's it. Like, you know, they've met that goal and, and, and they, and people tend to just stop there. Um, and so they talked about how, um, one person said, you've got to set your, set your coach's goals as uh, getting to two star. Because once you get to two star, then it's just kind of natural that you keep building from there. One of the other coaches, um, I think it was Mark Canella, I think it was, but he's, he talked about how, you know, as a new coach, your goal is to um, have five, uh, five stars underneath you. So that's obviously a lot bigger than getting to two star. But he said, he said, you've got to, you know, get people's mindset that that's, that's what they're going to build to, that they're going to build a team and that they're going to be a leader and they're going to have a strong organization underneath them, that they're going to have five different diamonds who are all five star diamonds. And, you know, having just having that little shift in mindset to, you know, just get to diamond, but you no, know, you've got to have this big team underneath you. Um, let's see. So Bo Eason also talks. So he's, um, an incredible speaker too. I don't know if you guys have seen him online or not, but um, so Bo Weiss and his, his big thing is about developing your story. And a couple weeks ago in our call, we talked about how, how storytelling is what's going to really drive your business. And, um, and honestly, if I can take like two biggest takeaways from this Dallas event was one is you've got to know how to tell stories. And the second is that, uh, it, is action. You, you've got to be doing something. You can't just, you know, plan and learn and talk and, and what, but you, you've got to act and, and move on these things that you're learning. Um, so storytelling was just hit really hard. And um, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk had talked about how um, uh, Facebook ads are getting more expensive and they're going to keep getting more expensive because the demand is is increasing and as more and more businesses get on Facebook and use Facebook for their advertising uh, people are just getting inundated with all these different ads and um, you know the more expensive they get it's gonna get harder and harder to uh, advertise on Facebook so you've got to you've got to have that ability to tell stories to relate to people to build relationships um, that's what's really going to drive your business and it's something that somewhere where you really need to go as a coach and learning how to be an effective storyteller. So Bo Eason talks about the three parts to a story. He said the first part is um, the more personal your story is, the more universal it is. So you've got to have details, small details to your story where people can relate to it. Uh, the more you can describe um, uh, little bits and pieces of your story the more people are going to relate. And, and he told, and it's funny because I, I look back on the conference and I can remember several different stories and I can remember very vivid, small details of, of stories that people told. Um, and then I look at other people that spoke um, and that I took notes on that and I really can't uh, remember what they were talking about. But the ones that told stories were the ones that I remembered. And that's an important thing to remember. So, uh, second part of that, so the more personal your story is, the more universal it is. Um, and then the second is physicality. So he said you, you've got to, um, uh, what do you say, don't be ashamed of your stories. Um, he said the more, the more um, powerful you are, the more you get your, your body involved in it, uh, the more emotion you show, um, you know, the better people are going to remember it. And the third part of that is generosity. Um, so he said, it's the art of giving all of oneself all of the time. Um, so he said, you, you've got to, you've got to give of yourself. You've got to, uh, be willing to share your story all the time. You've got to just be willing to give without expecting anything in return. Um, another thing that he said was, was that people can feel power. Um, he gave the example of, you know, you'll walk into a Starbucks in the morning. And, you know, it's morning, people haven't had their coffee yet, and they're all sitting there in line, 
and they all kind of have this, you know, kind of hunched over look to them. Um, they're tired. He said, it's amazing though, if you, if you, if you sit there and look, if somebody walks into that room, um, somebody that has power and somebody that holds themselves um, with authority, said it's amazing, they'll, they'll walk into that room and even the people that can't even see who walked in, they'll straighten up, they'll hold, self, they'll hold themselves up a little bit higher. He said it's amazing because people can just feel that. He said people can also feel transactional leadership. So he said transactional leadership is where, where you're giving something but you're expecting something back in return, right? There's that transaction there of, of giving and receiving. He said people can feel that and they're not willing to follow. But if you're willing to um, give everything that you have and not expect anything coming back towards you, then you'll build that relationship and people are, are going to be willing to follow you. Um, let's see. Okay, so Scott Mann, we had we had kind of a private uh, get together with, with Scott Mann in the evening um, of one of the nights that uh, Chad Tucker had set up. And one of the things he talked about was his father. As somebody asked the question, like, who was who was your mentor and who was the greatest leader that you knew? And he said, my father was. He said he um, he knew uh, what he knew and he knew what he didn't know. And he was always willing to defer to other people who knew more. Um, and so his dad was a firefighter. Um, and he, he, he was, uh, I think, like in the forest service. And so he said, you know, he was younger, but he was in a higher rank than some people that were older than her, than him. But he was always willing to defer to those people that were older and that knew more, willing to take um, information, willing to take advice. Um, he said, you've got to work harder than, than everybody else to learn your craft and that there's no guarantees and that you have to earn, earn that credit and earn that right to lead every day. Um, he said, people will follow you if you're clear about your purpose and you don't deviate from it. And I think that comes back to knowing what your story is, knowing what your purpose is. If you're clear about that, you're clear about knowing what your story is, what your purpose is, and, and you don't deviate from that, then people are going to be more likely to follow you. Um, okay. And let's see. Last thing that I wanted to share was... Uh, service-based leadership. So this is something that Scott Mann talked about, and it's basically the same as rooftop leadership, but you're willing to put relationships before transactions. Um, and, you know, I said how, how Facebook is just getting inundated with people trying to sell products, and it's so much more important now that, that we build relationships, that we earn people's trust, um, and that comes, comes down to um, how, how willing are we to give freely to help other people to um, build relationships, to not worry about getting a sale, um, but, but really building that trust with people. Um, while in, in the short term, that's not going to bring in as much money as quickly, you know, the more sales and, you know, you can just push and get people to buy stuff, you might make a little bit more money up front. But if you're really looking to build an organization to build a team of, of coaches and, and a business that's going to support you and your family, that's going to set your, you, your husband, uh, your spouse, or um, and your kids as well, set them up for success by having this organization that's going to keep going and keep pushing well into the future. Um, it's all about those relationships and building that trust and being willing to give of yourself. And honestly, you know, these are, are um, these lessons were taught by people that are that speak all over the nation, that speak to leaders, that speak to military, that speak to um, business leaders all over the country. And, and their biggest thing, the thing that they're pushing the most is um, storytelling, building relationships. And it's something that we've talked about um, a lot too in Team Inspire, but that that really is where it has to go. It has to be um, all about um, you taking that time to um, invest in your business, to grow yourself as a leader, to understand your your arena, understand the people that are in there, understanding um, what you know. Danny Johnson talks about is is the gems and personalities 
and, and learning those interpersonal skills, being true and honest, um, that's really where it has to go. So hopefully you got something from, from my takeaways. There's, there's tons and tons more, um, but I'm going to be talking about that to Team Inspire, um, just kind of on a general coaching uh, level. But hopefully that was helpful for you guys, and uh, glad to share.